This video discusses upper air balloon launches at the National Weather Service offices with meteorologist Eric Taylor and Stacy Haynes. Ever wonder what it takes to make a weather forecast? Well, if you break it down, you really need three things. A sophisticated mathematical model with equations that precisely describe how the atmosphere works, a fast supercomputer to run all of those calculations quickly, and accurate observations that describe the current atmospheric conditions at the Earth's surface, but especially at upper levels of the atmosphere. Where do these observations come from? Surface data comes from weather stations over land and buoys over the ocean. Observations at upper levels comes from radars, satellites, and aircrafts. But the most important source of upper air observations comes from weather balloons. But while weather balloons are fun and get all the glory, the most important part of the weather balloon is hanging on a string underneath called the radio sonde. Radio because it uses a UHF radio transmitter and sonde from the French meaning probe. The radio sonde carries sensors that measure temperature, air pressure, humidity, and GPS location from which winds and altitude are calculated. Hello everyone, my name is Thomas Weinset and I'm a meteorologist here at the National Weather Service in Jackson, Mississippi. Today we're going to be taking a look at weather balloons, as you can see uh, one right here behind me. So we release these weather balloons twice a day from our office, uh, once early in the morning and once later in the evening. And we attach to these balloons instrumentation that goes up in the atmosphere, samples the atmosphere, and provides uh, valuable information back to us. So these balloons send data back once every second on the temperature, humidity, pressure, and wind speed. And they go about 110,000 feet up in the air which is 20 miles. That's really high up in the atmosphere. That's higher than any planes fly. Uh, planes only stop at about 30,000 feet or so. So they go pretty far up before they burst and come back down. And we use that data to make, help make our forecast and we put it into some of the weather models that we use as well. So now we are outside in our balloon inflation building. And you can see here laid out on this table, we have a couple things. We have our weather balloon right here. So this really long latex balloon. And it's attached to this nozzle here. And what we have is a uh, feeding line that's gonna bring hydrogen from tanks in a separate room through this line. It's gonna inflate the balloon for us. We also have a parachute here. So when the balloon bursts, once it gets higher up in the atmosphere, this parachute will help slow the fall so it doesn't damage anything when it returns back to the surface of the earth. So now we're gonna go ahead, turn on the hydrogen and start letting the balloon inflate. So while the balloon is inflating right over here in the background, we're gonna take this string and we're gonna use this string here to tie together the balloon to the parachute to our radio sound instrumentation package just sitting outside. Once the balloon is released, we head inside and we check on the data. We get pressure, temperature, wind, as well as humidity and wind direction as the balloon climbs through the atmosphere. We track that data here on our display as well as the altitude as it climbs through the atmospheric column. Once again, we see the wind as well as the humidity and temperature. This is one way to look at it, a profile diagram of all of those features. And the most common way, the skew T diagram, which tracks the cold as well as the warm and moist air in the atmosphere. 92 sites in the U.S. launch weather balloons simultaneously twice a day. This is part of the Global Radio Sonde Network, with over 900 sites that provide the observations to accurately describe our current weather and make accurate future forecasts. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit www.weather.gov slash upper air or www.weather.gov slash jetstream slash radiosons.